Parental discretion is advised. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 313. I'm Sorg right here in uh, Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. With me is uh, my rogues gallery of wrestling fans, including DJ Lunchbox. Hey, what's up, hot dog? It's DJ Saucebox here (laughs) for you on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm sorry I didn't uh, prepare an elaborate entrance like last week. It's okay. You called yourself Saucebox. <laughs> that's DJ good Saucebox. That's good enough for me. Or Socks and, and Socks also and coming from San Antonio, Texas, where Hi, real yeah. wrestlers lose their smile. Now. Hi, guys. How's it going? I don't have a cool nickname that involves Sauce, but here we go. Wrestling Man Show. Boo! That <laughs> what? You also, are terrible. Also coming up with us, it, coming up with us, what? what I don't know. Well, well, coming... What? Yeah, it's mean? the Riz. What does Riz? that mean? Riz. Hey, Riz yay. But don't worry, this will never come back again. Riz froze. Oh, there he is. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> and also with us is Wheels. Oh great! It came right onto me with my eyeballs poking out like the old Three Stooges movies with the what? poor black shell. Hey, what? welcome everybody what? to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It's me. No, it got racist. I don't. Yeah, it, got it did really not. It, in the first it's minute. Weird. Good job. They didn't take very long. No. Also on the couch eating his McDonald's is Chachi. Hi, guys. Hi, Chachi. Hi, Chachi. Hi, Chachi. I, Sorg brought me McMitch's. Yes. It's delicious. Yes. He brought you what? Uh, yeah, newbie. Did Noobs. you say McMitch's? No, McMitch's. Go back and listen to the old episodes. Uh, I know. I remember those episodes. I ain't that old. What? Or you don't remember shit. <laughs> and don't. what? Wait, who are you? I, who are, who are you? Me? Who I'm Sorg. Guy? Didn't I say it myself? I, probably. I'm Sorg. I don't know who I'm, I'm Sorg. Hi. Can you put up the details? Can I put up the details? Yeah. Do you want to read the details? I want details? to read the details. Okay, what, 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 what's going on? You can find us at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, Twitter at Mayhem Show, Facebook slash Mayhem Show. Join our conversations, Monday Night Hangouts. You can email us at... Good times! Good times! At, Scoop of good times. <laughs> at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And you can even call the Mayhem Hotline at 412-206-WMS0. That is 9670. If you are on a rotary telephone, and God, I hope you're not on a rotary telephone. <laughs> That's how they watch us. <laughs> Maybe if you're in West Virginia. <laughs> oh, man. Um, you've come to the greatest show on the internet. Yes. And you can also go to your respective app store, the iTunes, the Google Play Store, <laughs> the Amazon App Store, and you can download our app for a dollar ninety nine. Look at my and get access to all the behind the scenes material, and there is behind the missy be, be, uh, scene? Be, behind <laughs> the scenes material, and the episodes get pushed automatically to that handy dandy little app that you carry in your pocket, or if you're on an iPad, your iPad, because those won't uh. fit. Those won't fit in the pocket. So well, it depends. It'll fit in my wife's purse, or if you have a Scott E vest, if it's right in your pocket. Ooh. And there it is. <laughs> That's this episode. There you go. So but we, you we are on. We are on iTunes, Android, everything. That's right. Yeah. And uh, Google Plus. I said Google Plus. I said Hangouts. It's close enough. Oh. Uh, so yeah, hey, you know, we'd like to start off. We didn't get much emails this week, but there was a lot of interaction on Twitter. Oh, uh, we got a. We got a. What? Hold on. Did we just get an email? No, we just got a Mad Mike voicemail that's Google translated. Let's read it. Oh. That counts as an email, sorta. Sorta. No, here's what we're going to do. We're going to read it, and then we'll listen to it later to see what's different. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right, so My here's... bet is most of it. Yes. So here is what the email says. Best thing to him. So this is Mad Mike. I'm sure... You're doing your shower right now. <laughs> My most of the last witch, and I think you almost exhausted. The hotel can sexy too, <laughs> sir. However, I don't think you can call. P.S. Posting. There's no way. Bruce Wood booked. Hey, this is Ford in the middle, and two, Hogan doesn't go over. So yeah, 
Nothing I could pick up on the position of keep this is. <laughs> okay. And that That's was a mad mic email, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm sure you're doing your show right now. I'm listening to last week's show. And I think you've almost exhausted the uh, Hulk Hogan sex tape jokes. <laughs> wow. However, almost? I don't think you can call it the penis book of doom. Because there's no way Russell would have booked it. Because they... <laughs> There's no swerve in the middle. And two, Hogan doesn't go over. So, uh, yeah. It's the only thing I could think of while I was listening to this show. Peace, one, one, there will be a swerve in the middle because it'll then become the double penis poke of doom. That's the biggest swerve of all you can get in a sex tape. Uh, wow. I saw you Cricket. did that. Get it? The chick has a dick. <laughs> and, wow. and we got an email. We did get an email. You want that one? Sure. Okay. I, I'm on a roll right now. Why sure, not? sure. Gentlemen, bear with me. I have the zombie plague this week. Things that were awesome on Raw. The CM Punk Jericho feud hit a new level this week. Just when you thought Jericho was going to apologize for bringing up CM Punk's alcoholic father, he brings up his drugged out sister. Well played. Santino Abs and Teddy Long dancing on the ramp. Go WrestleMania! Virgil will be appearing in One Night in China on this weekend, <laughs> followed by Debbie Does Dallas in two weeks. I need to get to prison before the zombie virus sinks in. What? Bobby F. J. Tang. There you go. There you go. All I right. Get it. Yeah, you know. Um, Let's go to the so uh, the Twitters. The Twitters. Uh, there was Riz. Uh, you yeah. you you uh, after the show, uh, like mere minutes after the show, it seemed. Uh, you, you had tweeted, uh, of course, we had the sex tape conversation. Long, long sex conversation. Sex tape! Virgil has a table in the corner. Um, <laughs> see, it's still funny. Yes, it is. Uh, well, you, 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 you said Mantar. Yeah, Mantar. I said Mantar to the Mayhem show. Yes. And a couple minutes later, I get a response back from Mantar fan on Twitter. At man, our fan. Uh, I'm trying to pull it up now. Hold on. I, I got That's it right here. Actually, you got it right there. Yeah, All he right. says. Uh, he says, yeah. And then you respond, oh, trust me. I think Mantar sex tape would be awesome. He says, oh man, I don't even know what to think about that. All I know is that there would be a lot of mooing involved. <laughs> and yeah, that would be awesome. Wow. <laughs> there you go, Mantar sex tape. But wouldn't that be half bestiality though? Uh, uh depends on which half. <laughs> if you're fucking him on the bottom, then you don't have to worry. He, oh, there you go. There you no, go. You do have now, to worry. You do have to unless worry. Unless you're mouth fucking them. Then now that's you, a whole we, other story. We had another did conversation. Did you just use the term mouth fucking, young man? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> I hope you're RA. That's, that's all I got. Wow. <laughs> I, just, I learned from you, Papa Lunch. So, uh, I learned from you. There was also Good, a, you learned from the best. There was also a conversation with a, fan of, a friend of the show, fan of the show, uh, Matt Carlins on Twitter, uh, where he wanted to, <laughs> based on this picture here uh, that showed up on 411 Media, of oh, The Undertaker. Man. That is amazing. He wanted He's to start. Right. It looks like Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> 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 so he wanted to cast uh, Back to the Future uh, based on this. So, uh, yeah, uh, somebody got into some Photoshop this week. <laughs> so uh and for you guys on video you have to if you're not on the video go to uh the wrestling mayhem show open group on facebook and these are posted over there so of course uh, uh whoop that's that's not there's wheels wheels wasn't in back to the future so there's uh the miz and undertaker in uh back to the future too of course <laughs> um so here get a little closer shot of that for you um there you go admiral well, admiral there. job admiral job um, so, and we also have, and there was also the conversation came up about Jack Swagger as Biff Tannen. This, Just because <laughs> this is amazing <laughs> because it's not that far off. No, it no, isn't. It isn't. <laughs> no, it isn't at all. So I wondered also who would fit in for Crispin Glover in um, this. And can mm. we find a face like that? <laughs> no. So, Cena. Did you get Cena? That's Crispin Glover? Really? I don't know. Yeah, Cena, Cena couldn't pull that off. No, no. Or, or no. Michael Cole. No. 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 Josh Matthews. 
Ooh. Josh oh. Matthews could play an awesome. I like that. Yes. Josh Matthews. I like that. Kristen Glover. <laughs> so okay, uh, let's see. We got Biff. We got uh, Marty's dad. We got. Do we have Marty? Yeah, that's Miz. Miz. Okay, Miz. I don't, like okay, uh, I don't know about Mrs. Marty. No. That's I can see awesome. Zack Ryder as Marty. Zach Ryder. <laughs> yeah, that's true. that's true. Um, what about? Let's see, Marty's girlfriend. I don't know. We have to change it to a different Diva every movie. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So, um, well, anyways, uh, you let us know, guys. Hit us up on Twitter at Mayhem Show or on the Facebook. Let us know how, how we can fill out the rest of this. And thanks to Matt Carlins for uh, for getting us along that. Uh, I also asked what we should be talking about this week on the Facebook. And uh, and the biggest thing I was reminded of again, there's wheels uh, is, hey, free Rita's today. I hope you got it. That's the biggest thing in yeah. wrestling today. That's right. Um, wow. <laughs> well, there's a couple other things, but we'll get to them here in the Any Minute. In the Minute, ladies and minute, gentlemen. Go. Hi, how's it going? This is the Hi. Wrestle Fan. It's time for the In the Minute this week, and I'm going to start off with something that was sent to us by a good friend of the Wrestling Mayhem show, Mr. Zach Rain, from the now defunct AOM uh, wrestling company that we all know and love. Uh, he sent us this very exciting message that reads as follows. I'm so excited to tell everyone about Cambria slash Somerset County's newest pro wrestling promotion. It's going to be something this area has never seen before. I know everyone has been asking the same question. What's it called? Are some of the local guys coming back? Will Project 13 be there? Who are these big deals you guys keep talking about? All I can tell you is is if you want all the answers, then you have to come check out the debut. I'll be releasing the date within the next two weeks, along with some very important info that they don't want you to know about. Wrestling fans, get ready for the future. Things are going to be crazy, and I can't wait for you to be a part of it. While we are on the subject of wrestling, come check out UCW in Pittsburgh on March 31st, where your favorite tag team in the world, Project 13, will be in action. Support indie wrestling. I love you guys. You're the reason we do this. We have man child. Yeah, son. <laughs> and now you've got our interest. Uh I I, I didn't know man child was going to be so local. He he's a he's a Johnstown superstar, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, he is. And now he'll be isn't a Uniontown group that's down there. So, um, go check pos- that out. Yeah. Um so I mean uh keep, obviously uh definitely we're going to see what comes from that. Keep us uh, updated. Maybe a future for an AON spinoff, maybe? I'm hoping more murder. <laughs> Cross your fingers. Um, the next uh, thing we uh, wanted, we were sent uh, to talk about was from a good friend of the rest of the man show, Mr. Michael Obama Fassad, on, uh, the, uh, okay. on the Facebook, talking about a company that we've mentioned before, uh, the Urban Wrestling Federation, UWF. They have um, their big pay-per-view coming up, and if I can pull up there, there it is. Um, their ruthless revenge event facade is on the uh, on the uh, cover pretty pretty well there. Um, it's going to be Sunday, March twenty fifth, eight p.m. Eastern, five p.m. Pacific. Um, for the full schedule, you can go to www.urbanwrestlingfederation.com. I be- and we've talked about them on the show before. I believe I don't know Chachi. Did you mention that you uh, that you uh, you were interested in this Urban Wrestling Federation? Uh, um. Uh. Can you hear me? Oh, there yeah, we yeah, go. Sorry. Yeah, you're, so you're you're back up. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I yeah, it said I was going to check them out. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Yeah, you have pay per view. I don't. I don't. So yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> but it's it, uh, it, it's it's a hassle because I mean, I I pay for the cable, but I don't have a cable box in my room. So you have I, to go down the, the cable bit. box yeah. is in yeah. the community room, and uh, that's a pain. In excuses. That's what I'm hearing, Chachi. You're right. It's excuses. Go support a friend of the because show. Because I'm lazy. I support the friend of the show every month. <laughs> except true. for except for when they don't have the, the shows that yes. month. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> well, there you go. go uh, definitely go check out the Urban Wrestling Federation. Uh, our good friend Facade is doing good stuff over there. And the final note that I want to make on the Indie Minute is that I attended a great event this past uh, Sunday uh, for Anarchy Championship Wrestling. Our good friends there. Um, for the absence at law, absence of law, 
um, over in San Antonio, Texas. They did a great job at the event. Um, Masada versus Jerry Lynn was amazing, which was at the show made a uh, match for the CZW heavyweight title that uh, Masada recently won. So there was a lot uh, built from that. Their next event is April 15th in Austin, Texas for Peace, Love, and Anarchy, which is definitely going to be a really great event. Um, if I'm going to write a full report um, from the event this weekend on WrestlingMayhemShow.com, so get, keep your eyes open for that and check it out. Um, and go support them um, on SmartMarkVideo.com. All their DVDs are there. And also the new SmartMark Video uh, video on demand service. There are also um, some Anarchy Wrestling titles there. Um, a lot of the best of stuff is on there at uh, smvvod.com. So uh, there you go, and that is your Indie Minute for this week. There you All go, right, there you thanks go. a lot, WrestleFan, for that enlightening segment. And we can't wait to see what you have next week. Thank you, Chachi. Who are you, and what did you do with that? Chachi? I'll just There's have a it. strange level of civility on this week's Wrestling Mayhem show. Don't sh- everyone shut up. I'm Why, asking this. Uh, okay. Okay. WrestleFan, He's that was- asking. That was two minutes longer than three minutes. <laughs> no, WrestleFan, right, you, know, you do a great job, and I appreciate sucked. what you b- contribute to the show. All right? There. I I'm said sa- it. I'm saving I, I may not. I may not care about the content <laughs> most times, but... What was in that chicken? You do a good job. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Is this because you're dressed as a Verizon representative? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is because... I had a shitty day. I'm not going to spend my night shitting on someone else's day. Chachi needs a hug. Right? Wow. I am going to bring wow. civility back to the show. I'm going to give I'm going to give on? WrestleFan a virtual uh, mayhem show high five. High five. There. And we're going to go on with the show where we'll get rowdy and talk about porn and stuff. Is this really the wrestling mayhem show? But I I'm, I'm giving him props for doing a good job each and every week. On stuff that I may not care about. <laughs> what the hell did I just hear? What? <laughs> Makes sense. I like it. All right. All right. Anyways. I'm with Chachi. I'm with I'm, Chachi on I'm, this. I'm going to toss it to uh, Wheels uh, to tell us what's going on this weekend uh. at RWA down West Newton, I think. Oh, yeah. If you can recover from what just Sorry. Happened. I'm mm. still in shock. Wow. Yeah. Um, shock yes, this because weekend, I'm being nice. March to victory four. Wow. Yeah, I know. Four. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's not. <laughs> All right, I didn't do it. But, uh, yeah, we have uh, some great action going on, of course, this weekend. How we do got... you know? I like it hasn't it. happened yet. Oh, here we go. That's, it's no, craziness. I'm just, no, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> no. I'm glad. You're sounding yourself. Okay. We got the Battles of the Ryans, as I like to call it. <laughs> Ryan Ned- <laughs> and Ed. Okay. We have the pretty boy versus the woman beater. <laughs> oh, good. I'm, I'm glad this is going to continue. <laughs> go to Sorgatron Media to pick up last month's show. Okay. And we also have a ladder match, which I can't wait to see Tati just spot your own dodging things. <laughs> but uh, that's with Joseph Brooks versus Jimmy Nuts. Joseph Brooks, of course, uh, he is, uh, first I call him the second coming of... Uh, of uh, oh God, I forgot his name. Brian Pillman. Brian Pillman. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, and also a graduate, recent graduate uh, of uh, the Team Taz Dojo. I think it is that, that they started up there last year. So uh, and he's he's real impressive. He's real impressive. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that match also. Uh, yeah. Now now is know? this going to be like a, a this is going to be a no bullshit something's going to hang from a ring ladder match right? Because I know you guys yeah. have done them in the past. Yeah, it's it's hanging from the top of the ceiling. Okay. So. Because sometimes, so, you know, sometimes you go to an indie show, and it's just a match that happens to have a ladder. Yeah, exactly. We've been to that before. We've seen that. Hey, yeah, I was going to say, we've been there, we've done that. I must say, every ladder match I've seen in RWA has had something on top of the ceiling to, gr- yeah, to grab. So, it's a true ladder match. <laughs> Excellent. And we also have... A return match of Chris Taylor and Terry Ring, the little young upstart. 
who thinks yeah. he's better than everybody. Wheels, wheels, you got to get excited about your own show here, man. You got to sell it. Say Saturday, West Noon, go check it out. Friend of the show, Shane Taylor is going to be there. He's going to kill somebody. He's going to take the title. Be there. Calvin McGrath, former FCW trainee, I think for a minute. I can't remember. <laughs> uh, Joseph Brooks, he's the shit. Go check him out. Jimmy Nuts, Saturday. he jumps around a lot. It's going to be a ladder. Somebody's going to get be there. Somebody's going to get a ladder shoved up their ass. Radiators. I hope it's not Chachi. Can, yeah, can me I just too. Say that <laughs> covered for the indie minute. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Check it all out rwalive.com. Thanks a lot, Wheels. We'll work on you. Hey, thank you. <laughs> this is why I Good do job. sound. Why are there you, you yelling you at? Go. Why are yeah, you why yelling, yelling at people? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just trying to right. enhance. Wait a the minute. Talent. You turned into Chachi. I thought that was a great uh, monster truck <laughs> <Did> commercial, <you laughs> like though. By the way. <laughs> All right, guys. In the meantime, hey, uh, it's time for the uh, big interview, guys. Uh, you've been seeing the last few weeks our Death from Above interviews. Uh, right now, unveiling uh, before we get to our Wrestling Mayhem show, Gold and everything. Uh, our couple minutes with Kurt Angle from Death of Above and TNA Wrestling. Right here. We'll be right back. With Mayhem show. What's up, guys? This is DJ Lunchbox of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm here with TNA superstar and Pittsburgh native Kurt Angle at the uh, Death From Above screener. Uh, welcome to the show. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, uh, the, the movie was tremendous. Can you tell us a little bit about the, uh, the filming process? Uh, the movie was good. Uh, we, we really didn't have a budget. Um, I think when you have a movie like this and you don't have any money, uh, it's as good as it could get. Um, I watched the whole thing and I thought, wow, you know, I could be really proud of this movie. So with that, I think Bruce Kohler and Brian Kohler did an incredible job. John Iwanek, also assistant producer, uh, my manager, Dave Hawk. I, I just thought it was a great movie for the amount of money that we put into it. So um, it just shows you that you can have good movies uh, without spending a lot of money as long as you have guys working together and 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 doing the best they can I thought when I looked at it I thought that James Storm did an incredible job uh, which we were very surprised to see him do as good as he did um, I think he's a natural talent I think he should get into acting uh, I obviously uh, was in uh, two movies last year Warrior and uh, Dylan Dog. Uh, this year I have Beyond the Mat coming out, the real movie, a wrestling movie in, in theater. So uh, I, I've been able to uh, take off, but I've also been doing independent movies just to keep me busy and get me practice. I think the practice is what makes perfect, and that's what I wanted to do. Excellent. Sounds good. Well, folks, uh, Kurt Angle, TNA superstar, thank you so much for uh, taking a moment with us. Hey, thanks for coming out to see Death From Above. No problem. A nice guy like this comes along and splat. Roadkill. Do that thing again? It didn't. <laughs> You're not allowed to park. I walked away. That's what made it do yeah, that thing. Yeah, and it got angry. It got torched up. Yeah. Like, like Sir Sauce in the Box is video game oriented, but Sir Sauce in the Box is also a vi very busy man. No. That's true. I, I can barely update my website. Exactly. So. For the internet. Are you are you home? What cock yeah, nugget? Home. Was it cock nugget? Hey, why is the poster down? Was it cock nugget? I took it down. Did you have a lady? No. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show 313. It's the Sorg, and it's time for another edition of that epic series. Remember when? <laughs> now, this week on Remember When, if somebody allows me to go... <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, Lunchbox I mean, was over there in the corner, like licking the corner of the screen, and then Hogan showed up. <laughs> I looked down at the screen, and all this stuff is going on behind you, and you have no idea. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just stretching Losing my jaws. His shit. Losing his shit. Anyways, uh, I, and this week's remember when I wanted to address 
uh, a little something that we did a hangout last night because a mm. lot of people are just 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 tired of of hearing these promos for so many months leading up to WrestleMania and it seems like nothing's going until that point and um and and just saw the wrestle buddy um but i remember when back in the day uh you know uh, sunday morning as i often say right after the hour of power on channel 33 out of youngstown and it was probably black and white because i never got good reception i went and watched my wwf superstars and and i remember it was it was a morning that i was excited for every week to wake up and watch early in the morning after a late night of watching Star Trek reruns with my dad, probably, um, and 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 what was Superstars in comparison to what we have today? It was jobber matches, hardly ever anybody important. I think Macho Man fought the Repo Man once, and I was overly excited. Um, and you know, other than Saturday Night's main event, we didn't see anything on our TV back then. But we also got the promos months and months of these promos of the ultimate warrior of brett the hitman heart of all these other guys of the repo man uh, uh in front of a green screen with their logo back there if they had a logo and uh and just going on week after week about one thing and about about the wrestlemania match three months down the line and what they want to do to that person and uh it really kind of puts it in place versus what we have and probably the longest running thing we've had since is this rock and cena thing and a lot of people were saying oh here we go another rock cena thing they're going to do something that's not going to matter and let's just get to the match or or with this uh, uh triple h undertaker now Shawn michaels thing um so I, I just wanted to kind of take it back to where we were and uh kind of kind of before we didn't have this short attention span when it came to professional wrestling I, and kind of what is done in this monthly pay-per-view cycle um, but I, you know, I think it's great that we do have this big bulk of time that they can do stuff like that with WrestleMania. What is going on? Nothing. <laughs> uh, so anyways, that is my WWF superstars is my remember one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't look you guys did. Okay. Uh, well, well with that, let's head it over to Mad Mike and his minute of mayhem. And we'll be right back. Greetings, Wrestling Mayhem Show. It's Mad Mike. Once again with your Minute of Mayhem. We're in the home stretch, WrestleMania, pretty much. There's one Raw left. And man, this week's show was kind of a doozy. It's weird. It doesn't seem like we have that many matches booked for WrestleMania. But then again, you have to remember... There's a 12-man tag in which I think only about seven, six or seven of the people have been announced for it. I think it might be interesting to see who else is factored onto Team Teddy and Team Johnny. I wouldn't be surprised to see Miz end up joining Team Johnny and maybe someone like Brodus Clay to be on Team Teddy because, you know, everyone lo everyone associates black wrestlers together in WWE because, you know, SmackDown Race Wars fight, fight, SmackDown Race Wars black, white, Long Island, because um, Ryder will probably be there too. It's weird that, that Teddy has, has four former world champions on his team. I mean, Johnny does. And Teddy has Santino, R-Truth, and Kofi. I, I think it's kind of obvious that Teddy's going to win. But at the same time, it really buries their former, their former world champions. I, I don't... The Kane-Randy Orton thing is just kind of pointless to me. It's like the kane Kurt Angle match, or... Yeah, there have been a couple of big matches like that where the guys really just haven't had anything to do. Um, sort of similar to Randy Orton and CM Punk last year. The Divas situation... I think change completely because of what happened to Karma. I, I mean, it really sucks, but hopefully she'll be able to come back and, you know, be the badass that we all know she can be. Um, and I think the other thing that really changed the plans for this was Wade Barrett. And it seems sad to think that Wade Barrett's not going to be part of WrestleMania this year, but Money in the Bank is going to be a pay-per-view again. And I think the perfect candidates for Money in the Bank, Wade Barrett, Zack Ryder. That's what I have to say about that. As far as Cena getting into a car wreck, <laughs> I don't think it's a work. I really don't. Because um, 
that's that's too much of a bad thing to be worked. Like it's not like it was televised. If it was televised or if cameras somehow caught it, then I'd say it was a work. But they didn't, so I don't think it is. And even The Rock tweeted last night that Cena was one tough son of a bitch and he can't wait to fight him at WrestleMania. That to me tells me it's not a work considering those guys have been at each other's throats. Well, uh, that's it for me this week. Take care. Spike your hair, bitches. Woo woo woo. Thanks, Mad Mike, for that minute of mayhem. Uh, I really people think the accident was a work. I know someone who does. Really? Nobody thinks that. Really? Who? Why? Wait, I had a, why I did didn't they, think this was, was in the news. Work. I had a theory that it was a that, work. That guy thought it was a work. That, that guy? Yeah. That guy? That guy, that guy? Wrestle fan for the audio listeners, I, okay. thought it was a Let work. I didn't think it was a work. I had a theory that it was a work. But, so, you, I, I, so you thought it was a work. So theorizing is not thinking. Is what we've come down to. Yes. And you're in college. Make any sense? <laughs> okay. All right, we got that. But no, yep. he was in a car accident. I guess what he got hit by is his SUV got hit by a tractor trailer, right? He got no, he got, no, he got, he got by hit a by a car, car who got hit by a tractor trailer. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. And so, and was he driving? I I, I heard it like no, he, he had a it was his personal driver. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Yeah, God forbid a wrestler actually drive their own car. Uh, well, you're on John Cena's level, probably not. Um, I don't know what Triple H still did for several years. He's not allowed to do anything. He's not allowed to do anything. No, yeah, that, yeah, that was the on, thing. Uh, that was this. This also was coming out that that apparently everybody's supposed to take it easy with John Cena leading up the WrestleMania with everyone. Yeah, with well, everyone. it's a big like, money uh, money thing. You don't yeah. want him getting injured. You don't want Rock getting injured. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and then he gets rear-ended. Yeah, then this happens. <laughs> that would be the worst. That would, but, but things happen. You never know, you know? I mean, then uh, Hulk Hogan, like, Jimmy, got insert, injured before his match at uh, WrestleMania 9. Yeah. I think it was, like, was it a jet ski accident or something? Or a motorcycle accident? Like something no, ridiculous. someone someone dropped the camera on his dick while they were filming. Uh, oh, that's uh, right. That's special. right. Special Money, Inc. Money, Inc. That's how they got their money, right? Um, anyways, uh, I blame Rikishi. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I did it for the rock. Any other response from the Mad Mike's uh, Minute of Mayhem there, guys? Or were we too busy listening well, to... I, I, he mentioned Shut before up. that I think like, the original plan was to do Money in the Bank or something. Like that they were planning to do Money in the Bank. Apparently not because they brought the pay-per-view back. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think... I think that was just a they, bunch... Of, that was just theorizing. Seriously. What I, what I heard was that um, there was supposed to be Money in the Bank at WrestleMania and it was supposed to be Wade Barrett. But mm-hmm. since he was injured, they I scrapped it. I can't imagine them scrapping the entire match because of that. Because of one person because of one person That doesn't like make that. sense to no, me. No, no. It, it seems too big for something like that. He is delightfully British. So... <laughs> yes, he <laughs> is. Yes, he is. Yeah, he's not just British. Uh, by the way, speaking... He's delightfully yes, British. Yes, he uh, Speaking of delightfully British, has anybody been watching NXT? Yes. No. Is the best with William Regal <laughs> in charge. So, uh... I, it's I just that. amazing. It is. It is. It, it, it's, it's really good. It's really watchable. And uh, now that maybe FCW is going away, they might have new talent. Nope, not true. Although, apparently... Wait, wait, what? Yeah, did that FC, FCW true. sticking around? Yeah, I saw those reports as well. I wanted to bring up. That's well, why I, I said maybe the original, the original rumor that I heard is that they, well, they cut their deal with their uh, I guess the company that does their TV deal or whatever in Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard that they were moving their uh, ter- or their uh, their training base to Connecticut. That sounds like rampant speculation at this point, really. Yeah, there wasn't um, yeah. a lot rampant. of And the word is the, the company is still know. going, still having their next week of uh, of uh, of shows that are planned. They're just not on television. Uh, apparently, the <laughs> company is still going. another fan on Plurk. <laughs> Josh, you got another Plurk <laughs> fan. If you want to know what this Plurk stuff is, watch <laughs> Awesome Cast 94, I think it is, for this week. Um, He's out of his three. Go to Plurk.com and add Chachi Says. And what? There you go. There you go. He's, He's bringing back. it back. Bringing it back. Bringing it I'm back. I'm bringing it back. Bringing it. Bringing it. Whoa. 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 No, he's allowed to say that. Whoa. Oh, he is allowed Whoa. to say that? Yeah, it's his word. That and... It's, it's his word. word. Really? I... Uh... <clears throat> I don't uh, know. Do I look like I know what I'm talking about at any point? No, of course not. Sprint. In video watchers, 
Look at me and Chachi. He's darker than I am. Does oh, that wow. make sense? He kind of is. This, yeah. this took a turn. I don't know what's happening. Hey, anymore. audio listeners, look at Wheels and I and say <laughs> he seems whiter. <laughs> now back to Chachi. Now look at Wheels. Now back to Chachi. Now look at Wheels. I'm on a horse. No, you're not. I'm on a buffalo. Oh, man. All right, what else is going on, Wheels guys? on a buffalo. <laughs> 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 uh, so what you picture the, last night? No, no, no. See, I gotta say this. I gotta say this. Could you picture me sitting on a buffalo <laughs> with the wheelchair on top of the buffalo? <laughs> or is the buffalo I in the, be the wheelchair? Greatest thing I've ever imagined. Or I'm actually thinking that the the buffalo. You're sitting on the buffalo with the legs cut off. Oh. And the wheels put on the buffalo. On the buffalo. <laughs> You know what a buffalo without legs <laughs> and is? Just looks Dinner. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, there was whatever last number night. it is, return of the buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In other news, we were talking about Clay on the on the break a little bit, uh, but there was some news uh, coming out of WrestleZone.com this week that uh, according <laughs> according to Variety.com. Uh, WWE Studios will be teaming up with Lionsgate Films for two a two movie deal. Maybe they'll be better, um, no. including including a reboot of Leprechaun, oh. the '93 horror <laughs> pick that was one of the first starring roles for Jennifer Aniston. I don't care. I'd watch no. that movie again. What? Uh, no, they're gonna cast uh, upcoming movie. films include No, no. One Lives, starring uh, Luke Evans and WWE personality Brodus Clay. And no. Barricade starring Eric McCormick and uh, the called hit The Day starring a lost, lost vet uh, Dominic McGee. I don't know who the, these people are, but none of these have any wrestlers attached to them. None of them um, are Brodus Clay. Yeah, but we also think they, this is the, the, the company that they're teamed up with, like they say here, for See No Evil and Condemned. And those are pretty decent films. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe once you because I these ones we've had straight to video were basically do, well no they weren't just WWE studios they had like it was some, some group it was uh, the Sony Sony Classic Pictures I think it was. Oh yeah, because fucking Knucklehead's a classic. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. There you hey, go. It was kind of funny. So uh, hey, I will go to the papers if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I don't know how. <laughs> but I find it funny that Lionsgate is wanting to work with WWE, but if you think, like, what was it, 10, 11 years ago, Lionsgate had an interest in buying WCW. Really? Really? Mm-hmm. Huh. I didn't know about that. I think it was, like, a Bischoff-Lionsgate deal. Oh, he was, like, one of, the, there were, like, one of his backers or something? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Um, but good for Brodus Clay. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is amazing. Well, at least he's not, not in a dra- like Jurassic gimmick, Park. Just like thing. the way he's sort of like risen in WWE. Because mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys know this, but um, the, I forgot. There was a shoot interview out there somewhere with Tommy Dreamer where he mentions about him as a road agent finding Brodus Clay uh, because he was a bouncer at a bar, uh, bought him a round of drinks, and he was just somebody that really loved ECW. And he's like, "Hey, you're pretty, you're pretty big. Let's you know give you a shot." Hmm. So, I mean, he definitely made the most of it with his gimmick, and now he's getting, you know, this movie opportunity. I'm the biggest Brodus Clay supporter, I think. And it's interesting, like, finally seeing, like, the, the NXT people kind of falling into place, you know? I mean, we've, we obviously Daniel Bryan, um, uh, Wade Barrett has, has kind of found his spot. Your lawyer, David Otunga. David Otunga is, like, the biggest called hit amongst the Wrestling Mayhem show, at least. Yes. So, he still hasn't answered my question. <laughs> what was your question again? Can I sue Levi's if I catch my? That was my like two weeks ago. Separate. I don't think he's a very good lawyer. No, he's point. not. Although he's finally married. Wait, he, he did give advice that is on WWE.com. Oh yeah. Twitter advice. Uh, I'm trying to look for it now. He can go on. Anyways, uh, and who else has come out of there really? Um, of course, there's there's uh, there. there's a bunch of people stuck in NXT purgatory. Uh, yeah. Other than that, like, just need to make their way although, out. Although uh, McGillicuddy and Tyson Kidd is something worth watching over there in NXT. To drop back to that, 
Um, and uh, just Gabriel's still around, kind of. Yoshi Tatsu's so, yeah. still kind of around. I, well, I don't think he was an NXT but Yoshi guy. Yoshi was an NXT guy? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's the thing. They weren't NXT guys. I mean, but they're just kind of people that are there. Yeah, he just kind of He's Slater. Out. Yeah, he's, he's Slater's around. Uh, <laughs> but What's really funny is it's like the losers aren't really the losers because they still get the jobs. Yeah. And then, like, like, what happened to search. And then, like, what happened to Caval? He left. Yeah. 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 But I, apparently, he's getting other work, though. I think it was a what good. What happened? Thing. What happened to Caitlyn? She's back on NXT. Yeah. Yeah. Playing hide and seek. Look, yeah. Loki will awesome. have work for as long as he wants it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and uh, well, well, there's AJ. She's getting a pretty high profile. Thing there right is now. AJ. So it's good yeah. that you know the Mexican violence is first on television. On Monday Night Raw. Um, other than that, so <laughs> found it. You found it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. What's going on here? All right. David Otunga tweeted, "Just being in the same WWE ring as Milan Miracle, Santino Morella, harms my reputation. Contemplating a lawsuit defamation of character. Hashtag Raw. Hashtag Otunga Law." <clears throat> Then he goes on going, he, he replies to a tweet that says, do you think John Cena has a, have, do you think John Cena have a case from being hit from behind? He does if I'm his lawyer. <laughs> Hashtag Otunga Law. <laughs> All right. And that's it. All oh, right. Wait, no. Yeah, there it is. Calm down, Milan Miracle. Put Put your sock back on, back in your pants. Okay. All right. And speaking yeah. of that, I, you know, something else I wanted to bring up. I, I watched the TNA pay per view this 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 week, um, and I was really it, one. It was a really good show. Um, and um, and I recommend anybody to check it out. Victory Road was a show this past weekend. Um, and apparently, did you know it's Social Media Month in TNA? Apparently. Oh boy, is it. Um, they well, Not only did they have a Twitter wall behind the announcers, which is kind of cool, and probably really dangerous um, as far as what <laughs> shows up there, um, but they were reading tweets during the commentary during matches. That's, uh... That seemed a little excessive, but not too bad. Um, uh, Taz going off trying to figure out what a hashtag was uh, was pretty interesting. I tweeted him and told him to come to pod camp. Um, <laughs> there you go. And, uh, and and they asked all night for you to tweet your questions because they do their you know they do your, their interviews with the with the guys in the in the matches uh, in between. And they would give the question, but the wrestler would never acknowledge the question and just say what he was going to say anyways. Yeah. Like three times this happened. Uh, so, and, and I threw a post up, uh, last week, something I've been thinking about for a while about, uh, wrestlers using Facebook. Um, what do you, what do you guys think? Have, have you seen some, some, uh, issues with people using Facebook, uh, or Twitter or are, is, is WWE doing it right at this point? I think, w, I think WWE is doing it right in the fact that I think they're regulating it well mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. way. Um, I, cause I read your post and it was a really, and actually it was a really great post and it, uh, there was a lot of truth to it. I think one of the things that stuck out the most from your post was the fact, like you mentioned, wrestlers using their real names on their, like in the, and you talked a lot about like independent wrestlers using their real names on their yeah. Facebook accounts. And that's more what I was geared towards. Cause I, it, people have asked this on Facebook before and I, and, and I wanted to address it then, but it just, you know, fell by the wayside and it came up again. Um, yeah, I think it just was like it's a lot of conversations we've been having lately about people just completely misusing Facebook, uh, yeah. and local indies and and whatever. Yeah, and like how you know if a wrestler uses their real name on Facebook and you friend fans because the fans want to know about like the information for the shows that you're on or upcoming, it's not a rep, it's not a fan you know who's you know looking for a wrestler. It's kind of like they have. The the fan will feel as almost as if like there's more of a friendship there in a way. Mm -hmm. Like I felt that but, that was kind of the one thing that stuck out the most. Because I mean I think not just you know I think everywhere in general in indie wrestling it's that it, there's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad when it comes to Facebook. Yeah, I was gonna say because of that, I mean, like you said, it's the good and the bad. 
because I've seen it. It's like I have some of the fans and they'll ask me questions. I'm like, I can't answer that. I can't do this. I can't do that. Because they're like, well, if I'm friends with you, you can let me in on all this. No, I can't. You're still a fan. Yeah, so, I mean, it kind of becomes that that whole thing where, like, fans trying to befriend the wrestlers around the shows, uh, but extend it on the on, on these websites, I guess. And, and, and it depends. It depends on the it depends on the person, I guess, in a way. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, also, like, one of the things that kind of sticks out the most, like, it's but I see it a lot in the Texas area. There are a lot of wrestlers that kind of go on Facebook and will just lash out, you know, a company or a promoter and just kind of, which honestly – you know, just in general, is not the best thing to do. Now, you know? is this on like their their personal Facebook account, or is this like do they have like a fan it's, page? It's where they're under doing this? it's under the account where a lot of fans, um, whether it, so it's some people that use their uh, wrestler like persona and some people that use their real names, mm-hmm. but it's a, it's usually on the Facebook page where a lot of fans, you know, are. Mm-hmm. So, and then that part is kind of sad. And. I mean, you, you do have some. Sorry, Sor. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. I was going to say. Uh, I mean, I when I'm looking at my Facebook, I have the wrestlers, like names, and I have their wrestling name, uh, yeah. Facebooks, just so I can keep up on both ends. If I have something personal, I go to the personal one, and I keep all the, the business side on that business page. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it all depends because I know there. I know some wrestlers that will um, that have two accounts. They have a, their wrestler account that have their personal account. But sometimes they'll befriend people on their personal account that are like, like sort of the fans that come to every show and that sort of know them well enough and know the you know know the business well enough in mm-hmm. a way. And I think there needs to be. I think there needs to be a <laughs> distinction there of of. You know, like, like, I, you know, to a certain point, because of all the stuff we do, you know, you know, with the, with these videos and everything, I get a lot of friend requests. And even me, I don't want everybody following me on my Facebook because I don't yeah. feel like that's what that's for. You know, it, right. it's and which is I, actually I really kind of have to know, this you, is just, you know, and, like, and there's a lot of people that know of us and what we do. And right. the same for wrestlers. And I think there's going to be a distinction for them that, you know, if you follow, you know, if you want to know what Michael Facade is up to. For instance, you know, go to his Facebook page and like him, and you'll you'll get all the news. But That's if you true. want Michael, whatever his name is, uh, you know, Michael as a friend, I mean, the yeah, uh, you know, mm-hmm. that's that's up to him to give that up. And I don't know how he, you know, say he does it or or Shima Zion or Zima Ion and and his real name, uh, you know, because there's those both accounts on there. Um, you know, but then then the, some of them like some, I, in researching this, like friends of the show, I didn't know they had a Facebook page. So I don't know if they're mm-hmm. just not being advertised or anything. I didn't know that Shima had a a real actually is a cup one. I don't know if he burns them all or they're just like other people doing shit or TNA did one. Uh, but you know, Facade's got one. Jason Gorey's got one, which is great. And then uh, other people, you know, I don't think they have them, but they're on there posting on like company websites or company Facebooks about storylines, putting up their promo videos, all that kind of stuff with their real name. You know, a lot Yeah, of, some, sometimes I, it gets I think weird. the promo videos... It gets videos, really weird. With the promo videos, it does work that way. And I think it's a great way to sort of sell it. Mm-hmm. Um, depend, it all depends, I think, on the story you're in. It, it, I mean, um, I mean, another I interesting th- point is, I think, I think another factor in it is how big of a name you are right now. Yeah, it's even even on the independent teams, like the bigger independent names, like say a facade or something like that. I could see that you know where you have that differential. Funny enough, there were a bunch of, and this is just an example that I used um, at the ACW show I went to. There were a bunch of young new talents that made their debuts, and they actually friended me on Facebook because they saw that I was friends with a lot of other uh, a lot of other the local wrestlers. Mm-hmm. So I, I mean, it's that. interesting. It, I definitely think if you're a smaller name, if you're starting out and you don't have a lot of, you know, credibility behind you, maybe that's sort of a good way to, you know, get yourself more known. It is. I was going to say that because you, that one female wrestler you got. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. She friended me after you being at a show and I'm up here in Pittsburgh and she friended me because you're a friend of mine and all that and probably saw the. Liar I saw on that you, you liked wrestling and stuff like that. Right. 
So, I mean, it, it, it's a good thing because it's, like you said, a good way to get the name out if they're newer or, like, there's people that are from California contact RWA and it's like, I have this, I go to my YouTube, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, well, how did this person know this? And you'll look at their mutual friends like, aha, mm -hmm. that's how they did right. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's funny enough. I found, it's weird. It's weird to see. It. Actually, a, um, one of the ACW workers is actually a friend with Mad Mike on Facebook that I found out, which shocked me. And I, I actually <laughs> asked him about it. And it's a weird, like uh, it was a weird, like sort of connection. Um, but I don't, I don't know. It's just it, it all. I think there's a lot of factors that play into it. I think yeah. like yeah. the stuff that I think the stuff Sork made in his reporter definitely accurate and you know something that people should follow. But I definitely think. There's a lot of factors behind it. it. The factors being your name, what company you work for, like what storyline you're involved in. Maybe some companies kind of want to embrace that yeah. whole Facebook thing more. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's it, it's all up to you know those factors. You know, and, and also you know, I don't know if I got this distinction out there in the article, but there was also this idea of you have your Facebook where where you are the wrestler, and your Facebook as yourself, like. Much like I have my Facebook and I'm a person who does social media and podcasting and video work and all this stuff. You're a person that is a wrestler as opposed to being the wrestler. Yeah, you know, there's, there's like that different level. And, 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 you know, how do you manage that? Now, I, I did make one point in there that some people this kind of works for like uh, Ray Rowe. I do believe Ray Rowe is his real name. Uh, I, I may be completely mistaken. I, th I think uh, it is. Yeah, I, I believe it is. Uh, but so he manages it and he kind of has that back and forth. Like I follow you know, I follow him. He followed me. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, and he has a mix of, you know, there's this real life and there's what's going on in wrestling. Uh, then you have somebody like Joe Dabrowski. You know, if you've ever talked with Joe, I, I think basically his life is wrestling. So it is him talking about his job all day. Uh, yeah. And it works for him. And he's a personality. Like, just like if you follow Joey Styles, like, you know, you would get all angles of Joey Styles, probably mostly wrestling on it, you know? Um, and, and I think that really works. And he's on there and he's able to be himself and a brand, uh, you know? So if you're fortunate with that, but you need to be very careful. If you are using that name, you know, how are you managing that Facebook? I think in the yeah. end, everybody needs to have that fan page at a certain point. Cause right. and then, and, and Ro has like, Ro has his regular page, but he also has, I believe a, a group also on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does. He, he started a path of resistance uh, group on there, which was his faction. I know uh, for a while up in uh, Cleveland for like, I think it was for firestorm. But he all, like I know a lot of RCW people that are also go on that group and post stuff. Yeah, yeah, and it's a really good group. I, it, it's really, you know, I saw it. I was like, okay, great, he's using this. This is cool. He's he's calling his fan base, and in the open groups and everything are, are something really cool. Like it's working out really well for the Wrestling Mayhem show. We have a lot of discussion going on there, and that's a, and, and if you're somebody like like a Ray Rowe that's been around a lot, it has a lot of fan base, especially like up here in this area in uh, the Northeast and now, you know, down in Texas as well with what he's doing with RCW, uh, you know, he's getting his name out there and it can only help him in that case. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, of course, he's going to have the haters that drop in there, but you just kick him out of the group. Right. Um, yeah. but, I mean, that's always going to fucking happen. Um, yeah, I mean, you I mean, you figure you even helped me out like months ago to fix the getting an open group for the RWA one. Yeah. And, and it's a lot better and stuff. And, and as it is, like you, you have the, you, you know, your, your page, cause there's a little bit of brand confusion going on there. Um, right. Exactly. Like, there's an RWA and then there's like another one up in Rhode Island. And then there's, there's uh you know, but then you guys also had like a commissioner account and, and some of were mm -hmm. regular accounts and not a page account. Uh, but now you also have the open group and it's great that you're seeing a lot of the wrestlers throwing their promos on there, all kinds <laughs> of fun <laughs> stuff like that. And that's what really gets the fans into it. Um, and this is stuff that, like, especially these indies that are, that are really just kind of guerrilla marketing themselves to begin with, need to think about. Um, and, and I just want to see a lot of them use it better and 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 get their word out there because there's no reason why any of them can't become the next Chikara or or Ring of Honor or anything like that by just like using this stuff and and calling in the fan base, you know. So, what I, is wrong with Chachi? I don't know. He's reading something. I don't know. What's going okay. on. I don't. I don't know if you. <laughs> Did yes. he get plurred again? <laughs> What's happening? What are you doing? Is he trying to listen this to this? This is an epic blooper of uh, SourceFed. Oh, yeah? It's a six minute video of nothing but behind the scenes screw ups. Okay. 
Oh, oh I see. Yeah, the conversation yeah, yeah, wasn't yeah. interesting me, so I found my own. Okay, I got one that will interest uh-huh. you. Should wrestlers use Plurk? Yes, of course <laughs> they should. As long as they go on as their aliases. Yes. <laughs> Don't go on Plurk and be you. Like, if you're an indie wrestler. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank so you if you're going to start a, a, a social media account and you want the focus to be on your wrestling, mm-hmm. then the account needs to be under your wrestling. That needs to be your public facing right. identity. Yes. Because, you know, nobody cares about the indie wrestler and his day job. Exactly. You know? No. You know? and, 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 Unless you're a diehard fan. And I mean, yeah. No, <laughs> like, no, I what's know. really funny uh, is, <laughs> what's that? speaking of that, is on uh, Facebook, I think a few of us remember. The good old wrestler, uh, Sebastian Dark. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. And I'm friends with him on Facebook, and I swear to God, every I'm... once in a while, he'll just leave me a message. And, like, once he retired, like, I guess last year sometime, I'm like, okay, wonder where he disappeared. And I got a message, same type of, like, comments. I'm like, wait a minute, who is this person? And, it was... and since he retired, he put his real name on his account i'm like oh gotcha i believe he got so bad that i had to unfollow him at some point <laughs> like i'm pretty sure he's one of those like and i don't unfollow a lot of people on facebook yeah and i, I, did, was, I did some spring cleaning on facebook uh today yeah, I, saw, I did that last week <laughs> yeah it's definitely uh yeah um you know what's even scarier than that hmm. he's a cop oh. that scares me oh Ooh, really well Really? Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. A lot of people aren't going to get that reference unless they follow a lot of IWC. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, like <laughs> several year old IWC. Um, Speaking of several year old IWC, so I, I got the the best of CM Punk off of you. Yeah. It's amazing watching the evolution of his tattoos. <laughs> 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 because it starts back in I, in IWC. Yeah. Where he only has like the Pepsi tattoo. Yeah, and, yeah, and he had, and like then, blonde hair. Yeah, and, and then things just start growing, growing. on his arms and down yeah, his you arms. See the GI Joe Cobra symbol and then blah blah, and, and now he has the whole thing across his chest. And I like, just wanted to say that. I actually meant to say that a couple weeks ago after watching it, <laughs> and I just now remembered because you said I the think word it's evolution. a prerequisite in wrestling, especially in WWE. If you look at everybody, what. If you look at their progression, it's like, okay, they come in all clean, blah, 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 except for Punk, maybe. But like Orton, all of a sudden, it's like little tattoo here, there. Now he has arm sleeves, and it's like, wow. Is there a prerequisite to get tattoos in WWE now? No, what it is. Yeah. You got money now. Yeah, <laughs> no, what it is, is up, up until that point, like, if they get tattoos, it was something they wanted to do. For a while, but a lot of people are under the belief that they're not going to get jobs if you have tattoos. Mm -hmm. I have hand tattoos, and 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 we had a good conversation about that. It works. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I shake attorneys' hands all day. Mm -hmm. It took my Mm -hmm. boss eight months to realize I had tattoos on my hands. So, I mean, sure. yeah, they're right there. They're so right they know there. what you're talking yeah. about in case. See? Yep. Yeah. They're right there. But, I mean, uh, what it is is up until that point, he either didn't have the time to get the tattoos or he didn't think that he was going to go very far. So he didn't get the tattoos. I'm thinking it was a money thing. Looking at the, the number of tattoos he has compared no, to now. because he didn't pay for most of them. Oh, really? Well, I mean, if you're... Normally, someone who has that amount of tattoos Mm -hmm. knows someone that does tattoos. That's true. That's true. I know someone who does tattoos, and he's a wrestler. Not surprising. And it's it's most likely other wrestlers. Mm -hmm. My hair keeps progressively getting worse as the night goes on. It does. (laughs) That's why we do this show last. (laughs) But, um... No, don't change that. I'm fixing my hair. Oh, I'm sorry. That's your mirror. Ugh. Oh, well. there you go. <laughs> I, and, and, and even like the WWE guys, I think are are finding. I don't know if they sent these guys to like a social media class or something, but it's the perfect mix of, you know, 
the character and, and thankfully like a lot of the guys in WWE it's really kind of an extension of themselves like you don't see Kane tweeting do you that would probably be weird, no, you know. Not in character. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, all of his all of his out of character shit is uh, crazy libertarian. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you don't you don't want to break the idea that Kane doesn't like travel to the next show in a coffin, you know. Uh, yeah. Same with the Undertaker. <laughs> he um, does it telepathically. Exactly, exactly. But like CM Punk, it makes sense because it really is just an extension of himself. And he goes out, and these guys are talking about like, like, like you know, shit they run into in their travels at the airport, uh, which is something you know is part of the you know, the lifestyle of the wrestler. They document it in WWE or or he, reaction- go, or he goes inside like a WWE warehouse and sees like a bunch oh, of yeah. caskets or ladders. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, them geeking out about wrestling stuff or or you know, Dolph. Ziggler seems to be an extension of himself or the heel character, and he's doing a real job, real good job with like the hashtag heel stuff. Like these guys are getting it that this is another stage for them to cut promos on, and that's what you really need to kind of think about. You know, Chris and Jericho and CM Punk are doing the ex- that exact thing, mm-hmm. like with their tweets back and forth after the whole "your sister's a crackhead" or whatever that was. <laughs> your, uh, your sister went, sucks dick for uh, drugs. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. But he went on Twitter and like replied to one of Punk's tweets saying that he's going to watch The Walking Dead tonight. And he extended this, the, uh, the promo in talking about his sister. Yeah. I, I forget what it was, but let me see. I forget what the tweet was, but it was brilliant. <laughs> it made me laugh. Oh, like <laughs> okay. Here's one. Here, here's one where it says, uh, "Retweet CM Punk finally watching Walk- Walking Dead," and Jericho replies, "Hanging with your sister, huh?" Yes, that's. Uh, it. <laughs> I mean, that's. I mean, it's those little jabs awesome. at each other. I mean, that that's great stuff that extends. And beyond that, looking at his, his feed, it's stuff like you know, talking about Eddie Van Halen answering questions from Twitter people, uh, talking about like traveling home from New York City. Uh, about Jimmy Fallon and stuff, and uh, and, and and like linking the video from WWE dot com uh, about 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 what happened on Monday night. I mean, it, it it's a perfect mix of something like this. And if I'm following well, Jericho, an organization, oh God. That's just- oh God. there's a commercial. Whoa. There's a commercial. I'm not going to join the National Guard, but it's a perfect mix <laughs> of like like you know realism mixed with you know jabs at the at the uh, you know what's going on on tv if i'm a jericho fan and want to know everything jericho this is the perfect level of something for me to check out you know Mm -hmm. uh and it gives that transparency to the level it needs to be but you can't do that with king and the best part is you know that as soon as jericho sent that out cm punk text messages them and calls him a dick (laughs) <laughs> it's like your dick or dms him or whatever i mean you know you don't ever know they could be sitting on the plane together <laughs> yeah, doing it you true. know um but it's like you're a dick lol <laughs> he's like hey drop a crack about my sister you know i you know you never know you know i mean oh, it, 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 and, and that's, that's the great stuff and i i really i really think that's replaced like we always talk about you know you can't go back from the internet uh to what it's done to wrestling but i think a lot of people need to look forward to what the internet can do to enhance wrestling exactly and that's exactly what we're getting to with what tna is trying to figure it out and they're doing their thing and i think they do an admirable job at it i don't think they have as big of a company behind it as wwe does so maybe it seems a little forced or weird at some points wwe sometimes it gets a little sick of talking about twitter but they're doing it they're buying into it they're making an honest effort and they're one of the better brand efforts they're doing uh the the mashable article uh where wwe like won all those awards and everything they said look they looked at all their guys and said hey you're a brand i mentioned it in that post they hey you're a brand even if you're some shitty indie wrestler trying to get yourself over you're a brand you need to figure out what that brand is just like you need to figure out like what your character is and why i'm going to give a shit about you at a, at a little dinky indie show and, and want to follow you until you become a wwe star like somebody like cm punk or daniel bryan you know um it was because of the internet with those guys and now everybody has a chance to do that you know more than just the shitty message boards where everybody was too smart for their own good that got those guys over you know now it's the general populace have you ever followed a hashtag tna or hashtag wwe during a show a lot of it is fucking garbage from these people, but it's an interaction, you know, um, and with the general populace. And 
that is really what is very, very important. And I think I hope a lot more people on the lower level see that. And I, I, I think it's going to get them a lot further by, by making a name for themselves there. So uh, enough about that. Uh, is there anything else we need to touch on before we head out of here, guys? Anything big this week? I mean, it's a good raw, I think, overall. Uh, mm. Eh. Well, you were eh. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I'm buying into okay. this stuff. I'm buying into this stuff, you know? Mm. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, we, we saw an art. Wait, what's up, uh, Yeah. What? Where'd wheels go? Huh. He just... He just rolled away. He just <laughs> left. What the hell? Apparently he did not like where this conversation was going. No. <laughs> he just wheels. rolled his ass away. Uh, all right. Wow. Well, it's fuck, uh, all right, fuck him. Um, you know, his, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of Raw last night, there was a good article that Justin Labart actually posted on our uh, uh, Mayhem show uh, from Bleacher Report. Uh, talking about how last last night's Raw, the two the second week before WrestleMania, is the hardest week for the writers. Yeah, they I can have, see it because I mean you're you're a week out, so you can't give away the go home stuff. You've had so much time, and you've built stuff, and most of the matches are made. You know, aside from like what's going on with the Teddy Long, uh, you know, Laura Nice match. Of course, they're still kind of leaking out people for that. Um, <laughs> uh, thanks, Bobby. Um, how do you think it stacked up last night? Was it was it the right pace? You know, of course we're gonna have something crazy go home stuff next week for all the matches, but I think a lot of stuff has been personally. I think a lot of stuff has been really well paced with what's going on with you know John Cena Rock uh, with CM Punk Jericho. I'm really enjoying that. I wish it was a bigger part of the show. It feels like it's just kind of shoehorned yeah. in there, right? Like it's there. It's another thing. But there's all this other shit going on, and it's hard yeah. to kind of keep up with all of it. Uh, they, yeah, they're, that, they're really I mean, running not just like the CM Punk Jericho thing. My yeah. kind of thing is, uh, does anyone remember Seamus won the Rumble? <laughs> like, oh, we're reminded when he goes to beat up the Miss. Yeah, but I mean, like, I what? Mean, that, like, yeah, you know. Have they built anything with him and Daniel Bryan? Like, they have. He was ringside and they did something. I mean, there, there's I mean, been oh, stuff they, happening okay. there. I think there's been a lot going on there. Um, but again, like, yeah, it's like, like Seamus and Daniel Bryan have been in two separate worlds. Yeah. And yeah. They're just going to meet at me. But it really feels like, like you have five major storylines going on at the same time and nothing's going to be, I mean, stuff is going to feel lower than the other ones. And I'm sure it's not a fault of the booking. It's just a fault of wherever your attention goes. Cause I mean, you got to think, like, usually what do we have? We have a lead up to a pay-per-view where this is the top match. You have the top match on the other show. Now they're combined, so it's even more convoluted. Um, and, and and then it goes down from there. We really don't care about match, you know, three, four, and five or six yeah. and seven. You know, and, and, it's, kinda, and, and, and that's like okay. It's, it's like this one got built over on superstars, whatever. But this is WrestleMania, so you can't do that. Yeah. So, I mean, I just, it, 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 even though, you know, I mean, we, we, we feel kind of mixed if like you know uh edge and del rio open up wrestlemania with their title match but really it doesn't matter because it's fucking wrestlemania who the curtain jerker is that's fine and, and yeah and it's not it's not you know the fact that it's probably gonna be the opening match that's fine but like it's just i wish it just feels meh like it you really think, does wait. feel meh and, you, just, and said, you know, maybe, like you said, Sorg, maybe they're pacing it. And maybe next week it's going to be the big go-home show and they're going to do a lot. Mm -hmm. But right now it just feels like... Are you watching SmackDown to see what's going on over there? Because you really... Sort of. It, it, like, it is that, down to the point where you need to watch SmackDown to get the whole story anymore. I, they're I running get, that like, way again. Really, like, with Kane and Randy Orton, like, I don't get why they're having that. That's, because like, he shook Kane his hand Orton. last summer. They explained the whole thing. It's because Kane shook his hand last summer and became less of a monster, and he's pissed at himself for that. That they explained on SmackDown, and they alluded oh, to it okay. on Monday. They, they, they talked about it Monday night as well. That's like when they tried to build a match with Orton and CM Punk for something that happened two years ago. That's basically it, yo. Know? That's not that, a bad thing, no, though. It's not horrible. isn't something to hate. I know, but it's just like, <laughs> we need to have this match. Let's search through the archives and find a reason. To have this match. I don't think there's any problem with that. Yeah, there's no problem okay. with that. I mean, we, we're, the, we're, we're the same show that complained about uh, them having no recollection of what creative. happened. It, what what happened three mo three months ago, and now we're 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 pissed because they went back to last summer to to, to string something together. Well, yeah, because you even think about that. Holy shit, he's back! <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> if he ah. 
I sneak up like a ninja at the night. And don't take that any other way. What? But anyways. What? Never mind. But uh, what I was going to say is, the fact you figure, there's people, when, there's shows we've even sat there and went, where are they going with this when they never ended a story somewhere else? And it's like, all of a sudden, like you said, another month later, there it is. That story's back into flow. It's like, okay, we realize we didn't end that story, so we got to go back and let that story continue. Right. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, so, I can see where also going I want to say... Oh, I'm sorry, Wills. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead, bud. <laughs> um, right? Even the... Okay, just right... I don't know, 12, 12 months, six months, let's say six months, right? Six months of storyline using the same 14 characters and every storyline cumul- cu- accumulates and them fighting. Yeah. You're going to run out of stuff and you're going to have to go back to the well a few times. That is true. That is true. That's fine. And I don't know. I just wish some, some stuff just seems kind of rushed. Like I just I don't know they they're focusing a lot on Rock and Triple or Rock and uh, Cena and Taker and Triple H so it's just like oh we're having a Divas match that you know they kind of came out of their honestly kind of was like oh we're gonna start something like two weeks in with this with, whole Maria uh, Menounos thing Manana Manana. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry and, and you know sorry. it doesn't matter Maria because Manana, nah, nah, nah. it doesn't matter because yeah. you you drop two of your people on that didn't have anything going on on extra started a fight got that whole audience to remember that there's Wrestlemania that's not mm-hmm. a problem because no, because wait a minute like a it's extra what is the attention span on of people watching extra I know but I'm just saying <laughs> well, they should have probably done it next week Three days before the show, to make sure they remember mm-hmm. to order it. Um, uh, I guess you know. I mean, then I mean that's how it goes. You don't you don't say, "Hey, order this two months ago." You so, know. My thing is that's and you're right. That's a great reasoning for it. My thing is WWE Creative is not thinking that way. <laughs> okay. You're just I, and no, and that's completely true what you're saying. But they're you're giving them reason as to why they're doing this shit. I don't think they're doing it with any reason. I, I'm, I'm sure. Are you sure with that, though, Russ? Reason. And you can't really say what you know what they're thinking. They may actually be thinking what Sword's thinking. Well, yeah. Well, I don't think you're thinking, thinking they think what you think I'm thinking like they're thinking. I don't think you think what that thinking means. You yeah. think? Exactly. I think. Exactly. All right, on that moment. <laughs> All right, let's head out of here, guys. That was enough for this week. Uh, so let's go ahead and learn, guys. What did you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, let's head over. Chachi, you got something over there? Oh, hello? Hi. Hi. Sorry. Sorry. What did you learn in wrestling this week? Uh, that in this day and age, if Undertaker comes out to the ring... I'm going to fall asleep before he gets there. <laughs> As you're excited, though, he has kept the bald head covered so far. I don't give ah, a whatever. shit. I fell asleep before his old ass made it to the <laughs> ring last that's night. Right, that's the first thing you asked on the show was what happened last night. <laughs> right. I woke up. I'm like, oh, crap. I fell asleep before he made it to the ring again. <laughs> and then I, I asked Twitter. I said, Twitter, what? What I miss, <laughs> and you know what everyone responded? Nothing. 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 That's pretty <laughs> much it. <laughs> so that tells me I'm nah. gonna continue to fall asleep when he's strolling up to the ring. So we're gonna sit there for WrestleMania and be like, <laughs> "Yep, I guess so." <laughs> when <laughs> the lights be. turn out, Chachi goes to sleep. <laughs> be what you learn from wrestling this week? <laughs> I learned that I really hope that CM Punk and Jericho's match will be, if it's half as good as their promos are, then it's going to be an excellent WrestleMania. Excellent. Excellent. Wheels, what did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that the internet could be a good thing or a bad thing for a wrestler. But also, I agree with DJ uh, Sauce in a Box, that uh, (laughs) honestly, I am looking forward to the Punk Jericho thing, and I hope it's match of the year. Excellent, excellent. Riz, what did you learn from wrestling this week, Beardy? I learned how ha- Kushi got fat. <laughs> <laughs> you stole my what I learned. Really, really fat. 
All right, <laughs> wrestle fan, what'd you learn from wrestling this I, week? I learned that I'm the only one in the in the entire wrestling community that's excited that A Train is coming back to WWE. <laughs> no, I don't think that's true. No, that's it's not true. true. He, his wife is super excited, and so is he. Yeah, because yeah, that's more money, more money, more money. Wow. Uh, from the chat room, sick Bobby of J Town says, "I think I learned that you think that we think that we." think that you think that she thinks that he thinks that they think that we think that Team Laurinaitis is going to win the tag team match. And that I, too, can have great abs with paint with a paintbrush and a... And he doesn't finish it. Dot, 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 dot. dot, dot. dot, dot. Sorg. That's weird. Sorgatron. I learned that the chat room is broke. Oh. I think he's insinuating that it was poop. Uh, no, I think I think uh, just on TV and a dream. Oh, and a dream. Okay, a paintbrush okay. and a dream. Sorg, what did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that Taz doesn't know what a hashtag is, and wrestlers ignore tweet questions. Yep. There you go. <laughs> I gotcha. was clued in on that. What, what was that, Wheels? I said, "Yep." I'm All still right. waiting, Otunga. That's right, Atanga. Then Atanga needs to answer more questions. Atanga. Um, hey, hey, guys, go check out. Again, we are over on the Google Plus. Google Plus! I bet you didn't expect that one coming. We're, I over, did. Wow. we're over on the Facebook. Facebook! Uh, Facebook! Yeah, that's just a random post by me, but. Uh, uh, we're and, not on Plurk! We're not on Plurk. We're guys. on Plurk! So maybe Chachi will change that. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> no, he's not, not doing, doing it. it. No, no. Fuck you guys. You didn't even want to do. Google I got my Plus. own clerk page. Oh yeah, my page. Just send me. So a he random. said, "Clerk, you." So Wait. hey, and go check out. We're on Twitter, of course, at Mayhem Twitter. Show Wrestling Mayhem. Hey, show. call us. We, we, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can check out uh, what we're doing, and including the article we were talking about earlier about Facebook. For wrestlers, not dummies, uh, and everything else, including the fantastic TNA reports uh, going on with uh, Mad Mike, of course. Um, go check out the newest releases over at SolgatronMedia.com slash store, including Road to Super Indie, where Chachi doesn't get killed. Hey, check out Dalton Castle's videos. He does these great videos over at Q108, uh, no, Q103 in Albany. He in is this so week. entertaining. And this week, I, he's a radio, radio DJ. He's like the uh, drive home radio DJ uh, up there in Albany. He's That's pretty awesome. cool. And uh, he, he plays with penguins. And if you check out his uh, video series, uh, Sisterhood of the Traveling Tights, uh, there's interviews with friends of the show, Facade and Zia Ion. I can't get used to saying that. Um, Shima uh, Zion. Uh, anyways. And uh, yeah, go check that out. It's, it's pretty cool. And he plays with penguins at the aviary. I'm not supposed to tell you that. Um, <laughs> was there anything? Oh, hey, Chachi, what can they do? They can call us! Oh, you want me to? You want me to keep going? Four one two two zero six W M S zero nine six seven zero. Why are you like turned into the leprechaun or something? No. <laughs> what, what can they also do there? They can email us at, at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. So for Sorg. They also have an app. Wrestle fan. Flashbox. We have an app. Wheels. One ninety nine. We're hungry. But download our app. In we your want more chicken sandwich. I want another chicken sandwich. And, and, go, it, and go check out insert coins to begin dot com. It, it, insert coin, not insert coins. Coin. coin. It coin. takes it takes two One purchases coin. of the app to buy a chicken sandwich. <laughs> so go buy me a chicken sandwich in the iTunes store, the Amazon app store, the Google Play store, everywhere. We are everywhere. For Sorg, Russell Fan, Lunchbox, Riz, Wheels, Chat Room, I'm Chachi, that's Sorg. Ma'am, out! <laughs>